Hi there and welcome to my channel. This is the animation. It's a game simulation animation that we are going to create in this video. So first, enjoy and have fun. So let's start creating our animation. We need to animate this guy and make him jump on top of each one of them. Let's start with that. I press P for position and after one second here, I will give it some time in the beginning. I will keyframe the position. At two seconds here, I'm gonna take one second of interval and I'm gonna put him just over here. At three seconds, same, I'm gonna move it to the other position. And of course, at four seconds, I'm going to move him just over here. Okay, now rapidly. So now we have our motion path, but it's not exactly the motion path that we want. We need to adjust it. Well, first of all, if you select a keyframe, for example, you notice it has some handles here because it's a continuous Bezier here. That's not exactly what we want. Even maybe you can have a linear keyframe here. To adjust this, we need the keyframes to be Bezier, completely Bezier. So I selected all the keyframes by pressing on the position. I will right click and go to keyframe interpolation and coming to spatial interpolation, I will change them all to Bezier and click OK. We still have uh, the same handles, but now they are broken and you can move them independently. So now it's time to start playing with your motion path and adjust it the way you would like. Now rapidly. Cool. Now I have the right motion path and if you play it, you will notice it's quite cool. Here you are. It's true I have the right motion path, but I don't have the right timing for the motion path. I want it to be jumping a bit. An easy way to do it is also to select all the position here and right click on one of them and come to keyframe velocity. And here you adjust the influence at 75% incoming, 75% outgoing, and you click OK. If you go out to the graph now, you have it all done for you. And you notice the animation is quite cool now. It's time now to do some squishing and stretching and squashing and stories like this to make it a bit uh, funnier, I would say. For this, we are going to use an effect that is called warp. Don't worry, it's not going to warp you out of space, but it will work here. So let's put it on the guy over here. Let's take the guy to two seconds so we can see it over here. And in the warp, you have several styles. And the one I want to use is the bulge. Of course, you can play with the rest. And I want it to be vertical. And you notice the bulge here, it's bulging or it is stretching somehow. Cool. Let's start from here. That is 12 frames before. So I will keyframe the bend here and press U to see all the keyframes. But also I need the scale to work with me. So I'm going to just keyframe the scale and put the bend to zero. So it's normal. I will come over to this keyframe here when it's starting to jump. I want it to bulge. So I'm going to bend it just like this. OK, let's say 100. Make it big. OK, that will be cool. But also I need the scale to stretch it down, you know, so it's like compressing itself. I'm going to take it down to 50 percent. That's fine. Now, when it's up in the air here, I want the bend to go the opposite way. So it's bending just inside. I want the scale to be, for example, 130 percent or less the way you would like. Here you are. If you play now, it's squishing and squashing. Now, you notice that when it comes to this position, I want it to be like this guy here. Okay, just like this. So it's falling down. You could start by copying these two keyframes and duplicating them along the timeline, making sure you're duplicating in the right place. Or you can use an expression, which I, is my favorite here. I will write here loop out. I will select it and copy it. Now, with the loop out, it's going to loop the last two keyframes. OK, you notice here you are and then is stretched back. Of course, it's looping the first keyframe, but it's like intermediate. Let's do the same for the scale. We add a loop out here. I will paste it and notice the animation now is already done for you. Now, using expression is fine. It has its uh, advantages where it's speedy and so on, but you lose control on the keyframes if you want to do something on the timeline. Also, we have here a problem. I'm going to open the keyframes. That this guy is keeping on working because of uh, the expressions. So we need to eliminate that. Let's come to when it's zero. 
I'm gonna go to one, okay, and 96% that will do. So over here, I will cut this layer. But first, I need another layer to replace it. I'm gonna take the same anoid and just drop it on top. So at this point here, we're gonna cut the top layer on the left and the bottom layer on the right using the shortcut option right and left bracket. So notice now when it's coming over, it looks, it disappears because it's not in the right place. Let's put this guy just on top of this guy. Okay, let me zoom in. Okay, that will do. And we go back to fit. So notice now it's gonna move and when it comes here, it's gonna stabilize. That's pretty cool. Now we have our animation and the guy is squishing and squashing. It was easy by the way to do that. Cool. Our next step is to start playing and this is when it comes to a trophy just over here We need to remove that trophy from the screen like he has eaten it So coming at this point same I'm gonna cut the layer here You are and the trophy will disappear when it comes over here adjusted nicely I'm gonna cut this layer right that's the right layer and we move on to the heart and now rapidly cut all the rest now, if you notice that uh, the motion pass is not very precise, if you like, you can still adjust it. Let's open the position here. Let's come to this keyframe and you can adjust it the way you would like. Make sure you are on the keyframe. You can do the same for all the rest. So now the guy is moving in and eating all the trophies. Now we need some sound effects and that's gonna be beautiful. Cool. I have two sound effects here I want to use. There is the swoosh. I want to use this sound effect. Let's listen to it. I press space bar. Okay, you want to listen to one of them. If I come to preview, make sure you have one loop. Stop, play. Okay, and we have the second sound effect here that we are going to use. Cool, let's use both of them. So I will come to the swoosh here. And when the guy is going up, for example, just over here, I'm gonna add the swoosh. So I'm gonna take the swoosh, press shift and snap it on the timeline, here you are. Now again, if it comes over here, just here in the air, I'm gonna add another swoosh so I can duplicate this layer and just move it over here and so on and so forth, I will do it rapidly. I think I did a good job, let's see, let's hear it. I hope you are hearing it. Amazing. Okay, let's move on. I want uh, that when he takes the uh, potion to change the audio a bit, I want to use the other audio. So coming over here, okay, when he takes this guy, I want him to use the other audio. So I'm gonna bring the aggravate just over here and take it in. I'm gonna remove the other guy. So notice now. So it's a bit too early. So I'm gonna bring it in when he's almost on it. Okay, let's play it. Okay, fine. And the second trophy will be just over here. Select this guy and duplicate it and just bring it to over here. Cool. So now you can play your animation and notice what's happening. There is one more thing I want to add before I let you go. There is the glitter animation. If I click and drag and drop it in the composition, somewhere, whatever, just to test it. You notice it's pretty big, okay? So we need to scale it down to 25%. And then what we would like that when it's coming to, for example, this trophy, if you like, you can put the glitter and let's adjust it a bit, let's see. Okay, now my glitter is appearing anywhere, so I'm gonna just put it over here and test it again. Okay, it's too late. I think this will do better. Yes, something like this. I'm gonna take it up here. Now, I need another one for the other trophy here. And when it comes over here, and we take this guy and put it just over here. Let's see. And of course, I need to move it on top of this guy over here. Okay, I have so many guys, huh? Let's start and let's look at our animation. Now 
Nice, pretty cool. Let's play it again and enjoy our work. Actually, it's pretty easy. So here you are, guys. This is how you work. Notice how I worked very systematically. I did not jump left, right, center and try to find it out. First, we do the motion path. We adjust the motion path. Then we adjust the timing of the motion path. Then we do whatever is necessary for removing these icons and so on. And then we add the sound effects. And that is going to be the video for this week. And I hope you enjoyed it and you learned how to create this kind of animations.